but it's reminding me at the very early stages of holding a leash where I would do all the things just to keep myself busy, even when I was exhausted, even when my body didn't have the capacity. I was like, no, you gotta do it, you gotta do it. And becoming hyper fixated on all the things I can and want to do. Welcome to Whole and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves. I'm your host, Jessica Locke, a holistic mindset, strala yoga, and human design guide. This podcast is not about telling you what to do. It's about sharing stories and tools to connect to your inner wisdom and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. Because deep down, only you know what's best for you. We'll be talking mindset, business, recovering from burnout, human design, transitions, and so much more. Let's dive in, shall we? Hello, hello. Welcome to another soundbite episode. Today I wanted to share something I've been pondering for the past two weeks with the Virgo full moon, I believe, which happened at the end of February. I noticed a lot of old beliefs and stories coming up, blind spots becoming more clear with that energy. And we were also at that time under the influence of you know, the flavoring of the 63 gate of doubt. Now, I have a completely open head and ashna, and I'm really starting to notice whenever I take that amplified pressure and try to run with it, try to make life decisions out of it. One of my biggest lessons last year is that the combination of my open head, ashna, and the undefined root in which two of my incarnation cross gates are active means that it's super important for me to create space before I hop towards any long-term action. Since I amplify so much and that root energy can feel like actual fuel, but if the rest of my energetics are not aligned, then I won't be able to sustainably reach the finish line. And the themes that were really amplified during, you know, that time last week was around money and business. All of a sudden, I I felt this enormous pressure to think of ideas, to make more offerings, to create a stable, solid system before I, you know, we start trying for a family. And at the same time, you know, feeling the so-called pressures of a woman's biological clock that to be honest, are noises from the outside. Like it's not something myself or am particularly concerned about at this moment, but I feel it. I feel it from <laughs> loving parents. I feel it like, you know, you got to do it now. And I'm like, I want to do it because I want to and have the space to. Yes, there are fears. Yes, there are things to move through, but I also want to be a bit more prepared. But, you know, having that kind of, script playing in the background, you know, that little bit of a, not entirely worry, but you know, something to keep an eye on along with the pressure of, okay, how do I find certainty? How do I make money while I am still raising a kid? How do I set up systems? And I realized I was starting to go into my old patterns, like fall back into those old patterns of creating and showing up. A little bit of context, I finally have some spaciousness after a very busy year that was last year, 2023, depending on when you're listening to this. And I can see myself right now, you know, with all that spaciousness, filling my days with work, make work, you know, oh, you can do this, you can do that, like a thousand things to do. Not that they're not important. But it's reminding me at the very early stages of holding a leash where I would do all the things just to keep myself busy, even when I was exhausted, even when my body didn't have the capacity. I was like, no, you got to do it, you got to do it. And becoming hyper fixated on all the things I can and want to do. But that didn't work. (laughs) That was a lot of pushing. That was a lot of not listening to myself and my body. And it's such a different energy 
compared to how I've been creating and writing for the past two, three years. And it's really reminding myself that so much of my growth, of my grounding and the impact of my work came from a space of trust and creating from the heart, from open curiosity. Remember, like human design, (laughs) even coaching, like it wasn't something I intently was like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to make it into a business. This is one of the ideas where I really follow my curiosity, my heart, my passion, and, you know, my love for designing and just doing one thing at a time. And it seems like that seems like the best way to honor myself and my energy as opposed to being like, hey, here are all the tools, here are all the structures, here are all the things you can do to grow. Not saying that they don't work, and I can talk about it a little bit later, to kind of share when structures work and when structures can be too almost like claustrophobic and stifling for our growth. And, you know, through this past week, I've learned, you know, a reminder that I'm not going to find my answers through pushing through mental conditioning and solutions like they are often temporary those solutions they can feel like empty promises like usually when i seek for them you know it's not another program it's not another money mindset it's not another you know way to get there you know the uncertainty that i'm feeling the lack of stability or you know that (gasps) almost that contraction isn't necessarily bad and trusting and also like you know knowing from past experiences that the clarity that answers come to me when i'm spacious in places like conversations with a friend we could not we could even talk about something completely random in a meditation and moving up my body like in places that i would have never anticipated to find those kind of answers you know and that's what keeps pulling me back the process of coming home to ourselves the many layers that we shed and then we rebuild of becoming of becoming and you know clarity is not something we can chase for clarity is not something we can force our way to and use our minds to kind of crank to get there sometimes you know like again our beautiful minds are so useful and powerful, but they're not always the most expensive. You know, the mind can be very stuck in their own ways. It sees, for the most part, linear, linear, literally, I guess, in a linear matter. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't see the big picture, and I can become so hyper focused that I don't even see the rest of it. Now, I guess, you know, from all that reflection, I realize it's time to take my own medicine. (laughs) You know, I share with my clients, with my loved ones, and even remind myself, you know, but sometimes it's easy to forget that when we tend to ourselves, we create the space for inspiration to see what paths to take next. Now, I'm not saying that all the ideas I have, all the things I want to do, we want to do, you know, the goals that we set are necessarily wrong but it's really about knowing when to create and what comes from aligning our minds our bodies and our strategy and authority versus doing the things because it should because we're convinced a plus b equals c we convince that that's the only way but so much of the equation that we're missing is actually how do we take ourselves into consideration. How much rest do we need? What are we moving through? What are we holding currently? What, why are we expecting ourselves to push and force when maybe we are in a different season? And, you know, there's a metaphor I share often, the garden metaphor, where when you're about to plant some seeds, you know, nourish your garden, whatever it is that you do, whatever part of the process, you know, you start with, finding the soil, prepping the soil, maybe pruning, you know, weeding out the things that are no longer working. And then we plant the seeds. And the part between planting the seeds and 
harvesting the fruits usually takes a while. It varies from season to season. It varies from whatever cycle we're going through. And noticing where are you in the journey? If you were to use this analogy in your life right now, if you're moving through a transition, if you are, you know, trying to find some clarity with some big life decisions, rather moving, job, relationship, whatever it is, what stage are you at? Are you at a pruning stage? Are you prepping the soil or have you planted the seeds? And now you're kind of waiting. You're taking care of the environment. You're taking care to make sure that the seeds do lead to something kind of like the, the nourishing part, right? There's also the part where we've planted our seeds and we're like hovering above the seeds, looking at it all the time. And we're preventing the sun from hitting it. We're preventing the water from reaching the soil because we're hovering, because we're getting in our own way, right? Are you in that place right now? Or are you ready to kind of plant a seed and release and take care of yourself, of your needs in the moment? It can also be a mix of few things, right? Planting some seeds here, pruning some other stuff that are coming to the surface, but also like how do we care for our overall garden, garden of health, of wealth, of abundance? How do we really soften in that place and not garden from like an angst space where we're like, we need to get the fruits. Of course, sometimes there are decisions where we are led to having to create some solutions quick but that's not always when we're able to create a little bit of spaciousness a little bit of like okay let the weather do its thing let the seasons do its thing we're going to be showing up we're still taking care of the garden but we're also kind of the co-creation process of the universe there's night and day and you know it takes a while for the seeds to first sprout and once it sprouts like i remember there was a time, I don't know if it's still happening, people might still do it, I might try it again, where avocado seeds, like growing a little avocado tree from the avocado seed was like everywhere. <laughs> and I totally try that. And I, but the thing is learning that it takes years for the actual seed to yield fruit. And we might not know how long the seeds we're planting will take to bloom if they will bloom. Sometimes the act of planting the seeds, the act of asking for a question offers a door, offers an opportunity. Doesn't mean you'll get the exact answer or exactly what you initially look for. It's also opening yourself to not just being locked in your tunnel vision, to seeing what else is inviting me into creation, what else is my expression, my expression being pulled towards and really just making the space to notice the stories that are coming up. Sometimes we can't change it when we're going through, you know, the emotional wave, the doubt, the mental definition, especially with seven centers undefined. I am often not just my energy. That was weird English, but you know what I mean. I'm, most of the time I am experiencing the influence around me. So really learning to ground into myself, to release, release whenever I can. And when it's hard to release sometimes, how can I ground? What are some things that help me hold this energy until I'm able to kind of move through it? Because energy is going to move through us and we can either fight against it or we can work with it to support ourselves, our well-being. Now for the second part of the podcast, I thought it would be interesting to share how I actually run my business, just to give you a little bit of, you know, for those that are seeking to start their own businesses, to become a coach, or just curiosity, I think it's so helpful to hear from others, to see how other people do things, just to get an idea of, oh, does that work for me? Is that something I want to try out? My business mainly consists of writing, coaching sessions, creating digital assets and resources, the tools that I use to share are WordPress, Pinterest, Instagram, newsletter, and this podcast. I also have an online shop where I run it on Etsy and my own website. And then for the coaching sessions, I use Calendly to link my schedule, Zoom for community workshops and events via Thinkific. 
And then I have the usual admin stuff of answering emails, comments, fulfilling orders. Now, everything I do for the most part are things I thoroughly enjoy doing, but how much of each varies depending on the season I'm in and what I actually have capacity for. And that's one of the most important things to consider. What do we have capacity for? Energetically, physically, financially, there are 24 hours in a day. How many hours of sleep do you need right now? I find that in the winter between December, January, I just want to hermit. I just want to be in my own space, just reflect about the year, what things come up. I don't have as much energy as I do when it's spring or summer. I love coaching and guiding, but I can't do it all day, every day. When I used to guide live yoga classes, I realized very early on, it wasn't something that I wanted to do continuously. Like one to two times a week, three if we stretch it was a sweet spot for me. Then writing, that took a lot of healing around doing, even beginning to do, I felt very insecure at around sharing my voice, my English, even with this podcast, there was a lot of resistance and a lot of things to work through to get to where I am today. And that was actually what helped this business grow. It was writing. And I think it's also such a big component of my design. Like I'm a four six, like a lot of my energy is here to externalize. It's part of the upper trigram. It just wants to share and role model the the things that I've learned. But, you know, that energy was always there. But also noticing when I was writing from the heart versus when I was writing because I had to do it because I wanted to be consistent because that's what the audience wants. And when I look at my chart to see how my energy moves, my only channel is the 2644 channel of surrender, which is community focus. It's being able to share what I'm passionate about with those around me. And a big component of how this energy works is letting our community find us. It is projected gate after all. So how can the community find me? Well, writing became a wavelength, a bridge for the people that were interested in what I had to say, what I was saying to come find me. And being able to honor the pace of my writing Oof, that was perhaps the most important, I, for lack of a better word, right? One of the most crucial parts of my own personal process in sharing and externalizing my information. Now, I've shared in a post like two years ago, a year and a half ago about the expressions, in my throat center, and I'll link the post here if you want to read about it, but I'll also share the gist of it here, especially for anyone who's looking to start something of their own or just want to tap into their creative rhythm and well, I would invite you to look into the gates you have in your throat center. Because I used to feel so much pressure to show up every week, even when the words weren't coming. It was a mix between my desire to serve, to be consistent, and at the same time, making sure I was providing value. And that is, you know, until I started noticing my energetic pulse, and eventually learn about my gates in the center. You see, that was such a good intention, and I see this in so many business advice, but it wasn't aligned to my energetics, you know, to post consistently, to show up every day, to, you know, basically be in people's faces so they don't forget about you. But so much of what we do, how we share, is unique to us. Our voice, our words, they carry a unique frequency. And the energy behind what we create is definitely infused in what we put out in the world. So, so many things clicked. You know, the throat center is the hub for voice, expression, communication, and action after all. It is where all the energy in our body graph is trying to make its way in order to be expressed. This is the center for manifestation, metamorphosis, transformation. Of course, there are other centers that are also expressed in a slightly different way, but each gate in the throat has a theme, a voice. And that's the center with the most gates, 11 gates there. It connects to the solar plexus, to the ego, to our identity, to our spleen, to the sacral. So a lot of places, a lot of these energies moving towards the throat and of course, you know, the mind as well. 
So having an undefined throat for me (laughs) means that I amplify others' throat energy. And when I do, this energy usually goes through my hanging gates. It's not consistent and I don't have control over the how, when it's going to be expressed, which let's be honest, applies to all the gates we have and channels, no matter define and define like what energy type you are. Like we don't get to control these energies, right? So the goats in the goats, the gates in my throat center is the hanging 12 and 33. The gate 12, known as the gate of caution, this is the voice of I know I can try or not. This is a very emotional energy. This is about being in the mood or not in expressing and processing our emotional depth. It's an impulsive energy. It's also part of the individual circuitry. And it's also known as the voice of caution. It's naturally cautious of the effects of their energy, of what they're saying or not. You know, they are aware of the capacity to provoke or even mutate others through silence or shares at precisely the right time. It's a projected gate, which needs to be recognized and invited in before we move it with others. And then the other one I have is gate 33, the gate of privacy. This carries the voice of, I remember or not. And it's all about sharing lessons from the past. It's the energy of withdrawing in order to process the stories it's received. It's about ending cycles and it's part of the collective sensing circuitry, which explains my pull to start a podcast to share people's stories and experiences and also it's projected. So when I'm invited, when it's recognized, it carries a capacity to course correct, to give the collective an insight about the possible paths to take. What was so revealing for me personally was that both of these gates are known as the gates of aloneness. The other one being gate 40 from the ego center, which means time alone is needed to process and alchemize this energy. And both of these gates are on my unconscious side, both hanging 12 and 33. So it's not something that I'm aware of. Once in a while, I can tap into this like pull to like, really want to share, that's when my writing comes alive. And it just makes sense now, right? Looking back, so much of my expression is around my emotional reflections and, you know, about experiences, about even how I started this podcast episode. I'm like, this is what happened to me a week ago. (laughs) And when I'm in the mood to share, the words just flow out. And giving myself the space and time to retreat really helps me process and integrate everything I've taken in until I'm ready and invited to share. Now, the invitation part. Someone who's running their business, I share on my podcast, I share on my platforms. Those are spaces where I've put together. Like if people come to my space, either they recognize me or some people, you know, just stalk other people to see what they're doing, but there is some sort of recognition there. So that is my space to share as opposed to being, you know, live talking to somebody, you know, the invitation and recognition works a little bit differently. But the lesson here is that forcing myself to show up to write, (laughs) even when there is no energy available, doesn't just drain me. It also reduces my impact impact of power of what I share. The more I'm able to honor my energetic needs, the more things are able to fall into place. I'm able to get out of my own way and embody my gifts. This is just a tiny part of my design, of course. You might have similar energies, but your patterns and how will look very different depending on what other centers you have defined. What other definition? Are you a split definition? Are you a triple split? Are you an emotional definition? You know, all these little insights are additional data for you to kind of like take in and see like, okay, how does my day-to-day look for me? How can I create a business that is sustainable? And, you know, obviously we talked about the throat center today, but we tapped into every single center. So remember that we are always experiencing, you know, 
our definition with those around us we're experiencing our connection to others influenced by the transit you know the other gates that i occasionally get hooked to are the 45 because i have the hanging 21 pointing towards it i also have gate 8 i have gate 1 so the gate 8 will be the one that also like connects my throat and then 16 because my son personality sun is gate 40 and i know this seems like a lot of numbers i'll probably also share my chart so you can see what i'm talking about but you know this is one of many many expressions so an invitation to look at your chart do you have a defined undefined or completely open throat how does expression show up for you what are your hanging and bridge gates? If you have a completely open throat, look into the gates you have pointing towards the throat and consider the centers you have defined. That could help you get a sense of where and sort of patterns of how your energy wants to move. And remember, we don't have control of when this energy you know, is activated, but we can be aware and support ourselves in the process is something coming nothing's coming rest how can i nourish how can i create the structure to write so i can show up but also not push myself if energy is not going there because you know the key part of understanding our designs is really being able to honor what we need and tune into that personal timing when to act when to move energy strategy authority always but and also so much magic in just holding the question, exploring our gates, asking the questions, you know, and allow them to come to us when the time is right. Some questions I've been contemplating for myself. How can we create from a place of spaciousness? A place of love? How can I create from a nourished, grounded place? How do those creations feel? Versus creating out of lack, out of desperation, out of push and shove. And also, how can I take care of myself through the lens of love and care and gratitude? And not a chore that has to be done and not something that pulls me out of flow i think something that i'm also trying to be more aware of is my relationship to caring for myself sometimes it's so easy to prioritize my own business my other relationships my friends family that when it comes to the actual care of me where i live what i eat cleaning cooking, all those little things might become like chores, but I know they don't have to be. I know that when I do have the spaciousness, those things can be pleasurable too because I'm taking care of me, myself, my temple, who I am. Yeah, that's all I got <laughs> for today's episode sharing some structures in how I run my business, very, very technical things. But if it's something that you are interested in hearing about more about running a business, how to start running a business, how to orient a business to you, I'll be more than happy to get into the specifics. So if you have any questions, <laughs> any common suggestions, please write to me. I love answering them and thank you for being here for joining me today thank you so much for listening to the whole and unleashed podcast if you're feeling pulled to get into action and want to connect within check out the Align and Embody journal on wholeandunleashed.com. You'll also find resources on mindset, human design, and archive for past episodes of this podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share, leave a comment or review on iTunes and Spotify. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful day.
wonderful day wherever you are.